Well, it looks like it's nondescript holiday season time again, so I guess we should get festive for the occasion. Let me, let me just... Fuck, don't fall. I should do it. In my previous video covering El Chupacabra, I found this film called Evil Bong, and kind of went down this rabbit hole of these shitty B-movie slasher flicks. And honestly, I couldn't help myself from not covering one. That's why today we're going to be looking at 2005's Ginger Dead Man. It's kind of Christmassy, right? I mean, I've, I've got a Christmas tree. What, what more do you want? Come on. Ginger Dead Man is a horror comedy film directed by cult horror legend Charles Band. If you're aware of schlocky horror B-movies, then the odds are you've come across something that Charles has worked on. Hell, the guy produced the original Puppet Master, which has become a cult favourite in its own right. Back in 1988, Charles Band founded the production and distribution company Full Moon, who are still going strong to this day. I mean, well, semi-strong. But they're doing all right. Not that any of that matters, because what we're here for today is some bloody festive gingerbready goofs. So, uh, let's get right into the film. Should be fun. The film starts in this lovely diner where... Oh, no. Okay. All right. Yep. No, that is... That's, that's not good. Looks like you got yourself a Gary Busey infestation there. Did you leave cheese out overnight? Because that's how you get Gary Buseys. So this crazy killer guy, Miller Findelmayer, played by the man, the myth, the legend, Gary Busey, is walking around the diner flailing a gun around and not actually doing anything. Well, not doing anything until our main character's father, this guy, goes up to stop him and immediately gets shot. What do you expect, dude? You can't just run up to a wild Gary Busey, especially not one with a tummy full of cheese. The recently deceased man's son then decides to end this like a man, and goes up to chat with Miller, where he politely asks him to put the gun down. Like five times. Put your gun down, please. Shut up. Put, put your gun down, please. Put your gun down, please. You sound like a sissy boy. Put your gun down, please. Put, put your gun down, please. Put the gun down. Pr pretty please? Pretty please put the gun down. Look, Busey, we, we got some cheese. We got some cheese for you, some baby bell. Some baby bell right there, that's for you. That's, that's for you, buddy, if you just put that gun down. Please? The crazy man Miller does what absolutely nobody saw coming and kills this guy. But being the nice and fun guy that he is, he decides to leave our main character, Sarah, alive. Cut to a few years later where Sarah now works at a family-run bakery, but looks like disaster's struck because they're all out of gingerbread seasoning. Disaster. Luckily for Sarah, though, this nice spooky Xehanort decides to drop off a box with what Sarah immediately believes to be seasoning inside. Yeah, nah, I'm sure. I'm sure that'll be completely safe to use. Yeah, you're fine. Despite the box being obviously sus as fuck, Sarah still decides to use it for her next batch of gingerbread men. Look at her just pouring that stuff out, right out of the box, just not even any packaging. That is not up to code. Sarah's wrestling-obsessed friend, Brick, accidentally cuts himself and just pours his blood all up in that gingerbread mix, which I'm sure is absolutely fine. We can we can still use that batch. No point in letting perfectly good blood dough go to waste. Oh, hey, uh, it's also worth noting that crazy old Miller got sent to the electric chair and was cremated. Boy, I sure do hope that the mysterious seasoning wasn't in fact the ashes that were mixed with dough and blood. That sure would be quite the kerfuffle starter. It, uh... It's a kerfuffle starter. Sarah uses this dough mix to create a single gingerbread man and chucks it in the industrial sized oven to bake. Look at this little cute cookie. I don't think anything will make this not look absolutely adorable. While our cute cookie is cooking, we find out that Sarah's drunk mum is pretty angry as we see her shooting the building across the road with a shotgun. You know, normal American stuff. It turns out that the building across the road is a new corporate pastry shop that's threatening to run their little bakery out of town. This shop is owned by this here cowboy man and his daughter, Lorna. Quick heads up guys, Lorna is the worst. She sucks. Being the absolute worst, Lorna thinks it'd be a cool idea to go and plant a rat in the bakery to get the health department to shut them down, but is caught in the act by Sarah. Do you want to get rats? Because Lorna? 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 That's how you get rats. See what I did there? No? Okay, let's move on. 
The two get into the most intense fight you'll see this side of the raid too, which ends in Lorna headbutting a switch that causes a big ol' electrical explosion in the oven, which brings a certain gingerbread man to life. Holy shit, that thing is gross looking, dude! What the- oh my god- that's a, that's a nightmare fuel looking cookie right there. Get out of here. Gross. I've got to say, I wasn't actually expecting the ginger dead man puppet to look this disturbing. I've got to give major props to Mark Andrews for his work here. It's good goofy fun and it always helps that it's voiced by Gary Busey. Oh, what a lad. So Lorna's boyfriend, Amos, pops up out of nowhere just in time to see the gingerbread man who taunts him and then proceeds to use his little stubby legs to run away. It's pretty cute. Surprisingly, the three don't react to what just happened for like 10 minutes before finally admitting, all right, yeah, maybe we saw a cookie swear and then run around. During this 10 minutes, the three talk about black magic, books, and mean gingerbread men before trying to call the police. Surprise, surprise, the phone line is dead and Lorna's phone is out of batteries. Shouldn't have been playing RuneScape Classic on the drive over, Lorna bloody Lorna. We cut back to Sarah's mum, Betty, who finds our little homicidal bait good, who promptly cuts off her finger. Oh no! Our little confectionery killer puts Betty in the oven and knocks out Julia, that employee girl from earlier in the film who was mooching around the place. Oh dear. While this is happening, Sarah and Lorna are chilling out alongside a bunch of baked goods that are definitely stale. Amos, being the good chad that he is, decides to head over to his car to grab a gun because you know your boy's packing heat with a car like that. Lorna's cowboy dad then shows up in his car and has a little look around the area, but before he can finish investigating, Ginger Dead Man shows up and somehow manages to use a rolling pin to drive the cowboy's car directly into him without being able to see over the wheel. This might sound kind of negative and dumb, but, but guys, Gary Busey is a gingerbread man who just ran over a cowboy using a rolling pin as a makeshift leg. I, I love this so much. It's such a dumb and goofy scene, but honestly, it's gotta be one of the best scenes in the film. And is easily the best death scene. R real fun stuff, real fun stuff. Poor annoying Lorna then goes outside to wait for her dad and discovers him pinned up against a wall. Oh, that's... that's a bit of a bummer. Well, you would have thought so, but she seems to handle it pretty well. After a couple of seconds of being a bit bummed, she goes ahead and loots his body. That's right, girl, get that Omega Ring of Casting. That's a cool plus 171 intelligence, nice. Back to Amos and Sarah, who find Julia trapped in a freezer covered in... Am I allowed to show this? I, uh, I do not feel comfortable looking at this iced balloon boobed image with cherries on top. Sarah deduces that the killer cookie is actually Millard because... Well, just because. And they leave Miss Frozone in the middle of the floor without taking her to a hospital, because ah, fuck it, hypothermia never hurt anyone. Lorna goes to regroup with Sarah and Amos, but what's that? It's a beauty one-liner. How about a facial? <laughs> She promptly runs away and meets back up with the others before activating a trap and getting a knife in the face. Yep. I, I think she's dead, guys. Dibs on that ring. Holy shit. Oh, and while Lorna was dying, we got to see the single greatest scene in the film. I'll, I'll just play it out in full here. Hey, rat. Rat! I'm talking to you. you want a piece of me? Hey, you little shit. Fuck off! Come over here! I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick your little rat ass. I have no idea why this scene's actually in here, but I absolutely adore it. Hearing Gary Busey tell a rat to fuck off and then that he's gonna kick its ass as a gingerbread man is one of the most ridiculous things I've seen in a long time, and I wouldn't have it any other way. It's the little things in life. Cheers, Busey. After Lorna's <coughs> tragic death, Amos and Sarah find Betty in the oven and manage to get her out. But Rut Row looks like Sarah's hanging back in the oven and Cinnamon Crunch Killer here manages to lock her in there and knocks Amos out with this Looney Tunes hammer. Thankfully, Amos is a top lad and manages to shoot the lock to free Sarah before having a cheeky power nap. Brick, that wrestler guy from earlier, shows back up out of nowhere and decides that the best thing to do with a demonic, possessed, bleeding gingerbread man is to eat it. So he goes ahead and eats it. Come on, man, that's gross. And not just because you're eating it off the floor. 
Well, you probably shouldn't have done that, dude, because it looks like you've come down with a severe case of the Gary Buseys on account of you eating Gary Busey. Hmm. Now possessed by Miller, Brick tries to kill Sarah, but is pushed into the oven and killed, thus ending the reign of the ginger dead man. Well, at least for now, there's a bunch more sequels. The film ends with Betty, Sarah and Amos hosting a bake sale to raise money for the local hospital. The nurses give these two kids some gingerbread men, who, in a shock surprise, all open their eyes, thus ending the film. Hey, that was pretty spooky. There's no getting around it, this film is unbelievably dumb. But if you kind of just lean on into it, you're gonna have a good time. And even though the Ginger Dead Man's not in all that many scenes, the ones that he is in are just an absolute treat to watch. Plus, hey, it's like a 60 minute film, so it just, it breezes on by. It just, that's the, that's the length of the film. My, my arm, my hand, it's just breezing by. Look at it go. It's, it's a short film. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go and burn every kind of whipped cream that I can find. Ugh. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with your friends, family, or creepy neighbor, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, Steven, James Stewart, Jace, Moonspirit, Andre, Corey, and Harvey. You guys are the real gingerbread man. I don't know. Merry Christmas. I don't know. If there's anything you liked or didn't like, be sure to let me know in the comments down below or tweet me at Snooping Turtle. Also, if you want to watch more videos of me doing dumb stuff, then you can check out this video I did for El Chupacabra or this one that I did for Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. That's all from me now. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.